One of the problems that people can have when they look at CrossFit is that they get confused between CrossFit the sport and CrossFit the training methodology. CrossFit the sport is about finding the fittest person on the planet. If you've been watching any of the Netflix documentaries, The Fittest on Earth, all of those movies on CrossFit, you'll see the CrossFit Games in action. And that's a test across multiple modalities to find the fittest people on the planet. They'll be swimming, they'll be rowing, they'll be cycling, running, lifting heavy weights, performing obstacle courses, a multitude of many events that will hopefully look at all of the 10 components of fitness and find the fittest person. It's a great spectacle. It's an incredible competition to watch and it can be really inspiring. And actually, if you watch the CrossFit Games, one of the great things about CrossFit is because our community is still quite young and fairly small, the majority of athletes will share how they work out on social media. So you can also watch those athletes training for these major events. And that can be a super way to motivate you to get training. However, the first problem with that is that it can intimidate people that are looking at starting CrossFit. The best comparison I can make is someone thinking about going for a jog for the first time. And the only time they've seen anyone running is watching a marathon. So they think, oh, how can I go running when I have to go 26 miles? That's what you're looking at when you're looking at the CrossFit Games. You're looking at the elite of the elite, testing themselves to the absolute lim limit, performing five, six workouts a day in competition and also sometimes in training as well, training throughout the day for multiple hours. And, and they'll be performing some feats and moving some weight that is unimaginable. The same as the world record marathon pace is unimaginable when you actually step onto a treadmill and try to run at that pace. CrossFit, the training methodology, is not about finding the fittest on earth through those 10 components of fitness. It's about getting you to your fittest and measuring it amongst those 10 components of fitness. We want people to be faster, stronger, with better endurance and mobility, balance, coordination, accuracy, all of those factors of fitness. But when people have seen the CrossFit Games, obviously, to sell them that can be quite challenging. So first of all, if you are thinking about taking part in CrossFit, look at the CrossFit Games as an inspiration, but don't think of that as what we would do here inside a CrossFit affiliate, CrossFit box, as we like to call it. What we do here is build people up, modify workouts to fit every age, every gender, every uh, ability, and ensure that everyone within our training facility is performing the workout that will give them the same stimulus as the other people training. So for example, if we had a you know, mid twenties star athlete who was performing and she was able to do handstand press ups, muscle ups on the rings and move a snatched, a snatcher barbell, you know, of 60 kilos on top of it and alongside her, was a completely new guy, athlete in his late 50s who had not been to the gym since he was a very young man. They could perform a workout that provided similar stimulus. So for example, she was performing handstand press-ups, as I said, he would maybe perform press-ups or even press-ups to an elevated box to modify. If she was performing ring muscle-ups on the rings, he will be performing inverted rows on the, on the ring, so like a TRX row, so from a standing position, and then some form of ring banded transition using just some bands and some rings tied to the rig to get that same movement and feeling through the shoulder, so they're still getting shoulder extension, triceps extension, but that will make him feel the same feelings that the star athlete that she was feeling when she was up on those rings and, and obviously 
for moving a snatch. She, he would probably wouldn't be moving any weight if it was his first time. He would be moving a PVC pipe and working his technique. We would modify the reps to, to fit. And we could both, they could both perform that workout. And often what, what, we, what we believe in here is, is timing or measuring the score for that workout. And they would have, if we modified the workouts properly, they would probably have a, a similar score. Because what we, what we like to do here is measure workouts by having a task priority workout. In other words, a workout where you have to complete, let's simplify it, but let's have to complete a number of reps for time, maybe 50 reps and we time that. That's, if we say that's the simplest way to describe it. Or, or we have a time priority where you've got 10 minutes to complete as much as possible. And if we, as coaches, can modify that workout to fit every individual, the score for those individuals should be very similar. The only time you will see a difference in scoring is when you have the elite and they will be the competitors because they may be all performing workout at one level. So do not be intimidated or scared when you look at CrossFit because it is a training methodology alongside a sport, not one and the same thing combined. So we're not going to expect people to come in and just perform a crazy workout. You know, we don't believe in the feeling that you have to be puking in the corner and crying to get a good workout. We believe that you need to hit the intended stimulus for that workout. Now that's for people that maybe haven't experienced CrossFit before are thinking about joining CrossFit. For CrossFit athletes that are already performing workouts at an affiliate, so we call all of our clients, all of our members athletes because everyone is an athlete that's just aspiring to get better at what they are doing. Where the lines become blurred there is that sometimes people get carried away with the competitive side. So the reason that we have benchmark workouts, workouts that we re repeat, is so that we can measure improvement. So for example, this coming Monday, May Bank Holiday, annually we perform a hero workout called Murph. And hero workouts are to honor fallen soldiers. They started off in CrossFit um, HQ, started there. So a lot of the initial hero workouts are US servicemen. Now that's expanded and it's worldwide. So different boxes will start different hero awards honoring servicemen in their locality. So we're complete, uh, competing a workout called Murph. It's probably one of the most famous CrossFit workouts. And it is a one mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 press-ups, 300 squats, and a one mile run. Now, before anyone gets too scared, we don't necessarily need you to complete that all in one block. So what a lot of people will do is they will break it down. They will start with the one mile run and they maybe do 10 rounds of 10 pull-ups, 20 squats, um, sorry, 20 press-ups, 30 squats. Alternatively, they might do 20 rounds and, and break it in half that way. And some people may even, if they need to, in the beginning, beginning efforts, adjust the run distance to suit them. And obviously, as I said earlier, we scale the movements to fit each individual athlete. So less than 50% of people will be able to do a pull-up. I would say probably more like less than 20% of people will be able to do a pull-up. Uh, and 100, obviously, is a huge number. So we adjust what you have to do, whether that's we adjust the reps or we adjust the movement itself. So we test that and we test it annually. What should happen is that the first year that the athlete does it, they perform that workout for time. They take a note of their time. They take a note of how they modified the workouts. Did they do pull-ups or did they use a band or did they do ring rows or some modification and did they do press-ups to the floor and all of the sort of movements that are there. And then they repeat that workout in a year's time. They have that time as a benchmark and they have the choice as to whether to increase the difficulty of the movements and try to match the time. And that will, that will show an improvement in their fitness. 
or to just repeat the, the movements as they, they did the year before and try to beat that time. And it really depends on how they've improved over the, over the year as to what they choose. The problem that having these benchmark workers, like, because obviously the great thing about having benchmarks is you can see improvement and you can be motivated to improve. There's nothing to motivate you better than having something to be, having something to work towards, you know. And these benchmark workers are just one of those things. The other things we have to aspire towards is learning new skills, learning to do a pull up, all of those um, excellent movements that we have in our training. We, you know, we can improve our weights by squatting more, deadlifting more. All of those things are excellent. But measuring our benchmark is, is one of the key factors we use to, to gauge our improvement. The issue that we have is that what can happen, especially on, on movements that involve body weight, is a breakdown in form and also what we would call shortened reps. Murph is a classic example of where this can go wrong. So if you are one of our athletes, please watch because you are doing this on Monday to make sure you perform the workout as prescribed. So what I mean by that is you don't perform full range of motion. So for example, what we like to see in a press up, and if I demonstrate for you here now, we like to see a press up where your chest, you start from a full extension, your chest goes all the way down, touches the floor without your hips rolling down to the floor, and then you press back up to full extension again. That would be a press up. And performing 200 of those is incredibly challenging. It is the most challenging part of the workout for the majority of people. What we often see is a slight bending of the rules when there becomes a time factor involved. So you will see press ups in which the athlete won't go to the floor. They will go to what I would call a boot camp press up where you just go to 90 degrees or sometimes not even that low. So the chest is nowhere near the floor. The other one we see is a bodybuilder press up in which you may well go to the floor, but you get nowhere near full extension. So your arms are always very flexed. If you ever watch a YouTube video where a uh, police officer in the States claims to break the world record for press ups in, I think it's an hour, you will see many thousands of these over and over again. Nothing wrong with doing those reps if you know that you're doing them for a reason, to get a pump or anything like that, but in terms of measuring your improvement and getting improvement, they are not your best forms uh, of reps to do. In addition, you'll see uh, press ups where the hips go to the floor and maybe the chest doesn't go to the floor. If the chest does go, you see what we call a worming up as well, where you're actually not lifting the same amount of weight. You're doing almost like a um, seal pose, a yoga pose here, upward dog, and then you're rolling up from there. That is also a way of skipping your reps. And the problem with all of that is that, first of all, you're not going to get an accurate benchmark number and you know what often happens, and I've seen it in multiple years of training people, is that when you have someone like myself who's quite a vigilant judge watching someone doing a workout as, as this and they time the workout and maybe they did it a year earlier without such a vigilant judge watching, there could be a 30% increase in their time from the year previous just because of the rep standards. And that's really important. I've seen athletes do Murph in a time that's faster than the CrossFit Games athletes, but they haven't performed a single press up. That's getting confused between ego or the sport and the training methodology. So let's set aside the fact that it's giving you a false time because in theory, if you did bad press-ups all the time, 
you would get a measurable sort of way to track your improvement. If you never changed your, your standards, you would see some improvement over time, as long as you could guarantee that that stands there. But we, the reason we have chest to floor into full extension is because it's a definite position you can measure. That's the first reason. The second and more important reason is, if you are looking to get stronger, you want to train your muscles through their full safe range of motion. For example, anyone out there who wants to get better at pressing a barbell, bench press, the sort of the big eager number for most guys in the gym, well, where does the bar start in a bench press? Well, it should, it should. And again, you'll see some terrible, terrible reps, not just in a crossfit gym, in fact, more often in a regular gym, um, where the bar doesn't start on the chest, but it should start on the chest and it should extend to full extension. That's, that's how you measure a bench press. Well, if you're never doing a press up to your chest, to the floor, and you're never getting to full extension, how can you expect your shoulders, your, your, your pecs, your triceps, to be getting stronger for that bench. And that would apply even if you were doing an overhead press, getting that full range of motion in the, in the press up is going to help in your overhead press and your ability to do handstand press ups, all of those movements. So it's really important you hold yourself to some kind of account on that. That's the same. Also, we'll see, I'm not going to show you right now because I have to move the camera around, but also when you see a pull up, you'll see people do pull ups where they don't get the chin over the bar and or, and or, they don't come down to full extension. In fact, you see this sort of short pull-ups as often as you see them not getting over the bar. And again, both times, you're not going to get the strength through your lats. You're not going to get the strength through your bicep. You're going to get half the gains you'd get from doing full range of motion. If your aspiration is to get better and fitter and be able to move on to greater things like muscle ups and all of those things that you see in the CrossFit Games, then the, it starts with having full range of motion on every single rep. The simplest movements are often the ones that are performed poorly. The other movement that is performed poorly in Murph and oh my God, in boot camps, horrendous, but in Murph especially, and in CrossFit workouts is an air squat. And uh, like I say, I, I call out boot camps, but I've seen our members do them equally as poorly. And I'm, I'm very vigilant on this. And I know that our coaches are as well, but you know, you, your eyes can only be in a certain corner of the room at a certain time, but you will see a squat and you see that the, the two or maybe both variations happen. And this is a squat should be, and I struggle with squat mobility. Everyone who trains with me knows that I have issues with my ankles that I complain about all the time. Um, I need to shut, stop, stop whinging, but I now have issues with that. But you need to make sure that you get your hip crease below your knee. Now, if we had someone who was loading the bar and maybe it wasn't safe for them to go below parallel, that's a different issue. But if we're doing body weight, then we should all be able to get to that position. Or the vast majority of us. The other thing that you see when you see an air squat is, and a body weight squat is what we call it here, is not getting up to full extension. Now, this is full extension here, by the way, standing up. What you see often um, when you watch people doing this is you see a movement where they maybe go below parallel, but then they come to here. Or they come to here. So it's like this. Okay? Not coming up fully. So if you're not coming up fully, you're never using your glutes, which is what we want to be using. And the same if you go down as well, by the way, your, your glutes are firing on the way down. You're not using your glutes. You're not getting that hip extension through there. Your body is staying in hip flexion throughout the movement. I talked in previous videos about uh, how tight people are in their hip flexors. And again, we're not going to get an accurate measure or benchmark to set for that workout. I, I remember myself participating in boot camps with clients who maybe um, were a bit intimidated to go to them for the first time. So I said, I would join them for these boot camps, And I would nearly always be the last person to finish some of these body weight workouts. In spite of the fact that I, I, I like to think that I'm fitter than maybe the average person, maybe not the fittest here at my CrossFit affiliate, but fitter than the average person. But I would always finish near the end because 
what, what exercises do you see performed in boot camps? Press ups and squats. And when people are doing half range press ups, half range squats, it's massively quicker, probably twice as quick, if not more. So you can really shave time and shave your results. <laughs> in other words, get fewer results, less results by performing substandard reps. So it's really, really important that you put aside your ego and you put aside the sport and you think about being virtuous in everything that you do in your training. And that's what our methodology is as coaches here at CrossFit Chilton. We want people to get fitter across the board. We want people to see improvement. And we know that that improvement can only come from reps being performed to a high standard. And yes, if we are seeing that, then we'll be pushing you to work harder and faster. And to, if we're talking about weight, if we see great form, where are we looking to, to increase your intensity by adding more weight and adding more difficulty to your movements? But only and only when you can perform the reps correctly. So when Murph comes around on Monday, we are going to make sure that people scale appropriately. If they don't have the ability to do 100 pull-ups, even broken up over 20 sets, at full range of motion, then they need to either modify the number of reps they're going to be performing or make those reps easier. Now we are in lockdown, so some people won't be performing pull-ups, they'll do a modification, whether that's a row, whether that's a row with a weight. But anyway, we want to make sure that they are finding that same stimulus that they should be getting from doing those pull-ups. And the same for press-ups. If people can't perform 200 press-ups, even if broken down into sets of 20 or sets of 10 or however we, we want to break those down, um, we will modify those. So we will elevate their hands up or we will get them to do them kneeling. Um, I have some issues with kneeling press up just because people can adjust their positions, but kneeling is, is better than not doing full range of motion uh, with your full press up position. For air squats, if someone isn't sure whether they're getting all the way down, they, they're obviously going to be sure if they're coming all the way up because they're boosted up, right? Hopefully. Um, then I, I always recommend them putting something that they can just as, as a touch marker. So uh, a, a, a low stool, or we use often use one of our medicine balls here to go down towards, and it can make a real difference in the time of that workout, but also how that workout feels. It will feel much tougher. It will also, uh, you'll get more of a DOMS the next day because you'll be working some range of motion. Maybe if you haven't been doing that regularly, you haven't done before and therefore, you're going to get a lot more benefit because you're going to hit more muscle fibers. You're going to get more training effect from that workout. And that's what we want to see. We want to see everyone getting the maximum training effect from every workout. So do not get confused between CrossFit the sport and CrossFit the training methodology. The sport is about getting stuff done as fast as possible for competition. And that may involve some breakdown in form. Now we're not coaching that here, but we may, if someone here's a competitor, we may coach some ways to be more efficient, but we're not going to coach them to move in the vision where they're going to hurt themselves. And the athletes that are training for the games also are not training in such a way that they are looking to injure themselves. They're training to, to make sure that they stay free of injury so that they can perform at their best at the event. But during the event, if the time comes and they have to push that last final workout to win the event, they're obviously going to do whatever it takes and that may involve some poor form. So if you do see poor form in some of those competitions, don't think, oh, that's how they train in the gym. That's just someone trying to bust themselves to get over the finish line. When we're looking at our own training here at CrossFit, or if you're just training yourself in the gym, think about what you're training for. So if you are in the gym and you are doing weights, you're a bodybuilder, you're doing the classic guy workout, um, where you're just doing bench press and um, lat pull downs. Think about the form of that movement and choose a weight that's appropriate that's going to get you that form and that, those results. Don't just push the maximum weight for your ego because someone's you know, walking past and you want to show off to them. Make sure you're getting full range of motion for the exercise that you've chosen. Even powerlifters 
don't perform max reps outside of competition or they very rarely do. They have what they call a training max, which is the, the most they can move safely and efficiently in training. And the competition max will be greater than that because that's where they're pushing themselves beyond that safe barrier to win a competition. So think about whatever you're doing in your training to be virtuous in your movement and look at what you're trying to achieve from that session. And if you're, what you're trying to achieve is just to get the best time on a board at the expense of everything else, then ask yourself why you're trying to do that because it's not going to get you necessarily fitter. It's not going to get you uh, the results you want body composition or looks wise, aesthetic wise. It's just going to have a number on a score sheet. And if that's your goal, if your goal is just to become top of the leaderboard in whatever leaderboard, whether that's a leaderboard in your head or whether that's a, a leaderboard that you, you know, we have an app where we score our workouts here. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but if that's all that matters to you, then absolutely fine. You know, feel free to go ahead, but just be aware um, that it, it won't get you any results that, you, that you're looking for. I would say, unless that is the only result you're looking for, is just to be top of the leaderboard every single day. In that case, fire away, do some dodgy reps and maybe even skip some reps. You know, don't even bother doing reps, just write a score down because if that's what you want to do, great. Um, kudos to you. I hope you enjoy your training. For the rest of us, let's think about training effect. Let's think about what muscles we're trying to use. If you're unsure, and you're doing an exercise, you're not sure what muscles you should be feeling, then always obviously ask a coach because a coach will tell you what you should be feeling and how it should feel. And they may even look at you and, and be able to tell you, are you doing it correctly? And therefore are you going to get the maximum results or are you just doing something that maybe looks similar, but isn't going to get you the results you're trying to achieve. And that's where you need to differentiate. And, and that's where we need to differentiate with CrossFit is that CrossFit is about getting you fitter. The CrossFit sport is about winning. And we want to get people fitter. And some people may then go into the sport that will be their choice i hope you've enjoyed this video of me trying to clear up a little bit of what crossfit is all about and those of you that are competing or uh sorry training in crossfit getting confused myself there they're training in crossfit you take these lessons with you when you're in your next training session and if you're training on monday take this on board because it is super important i would rather see someone perform a workout slower but I know that all of their reps are excellent rather than just trying to beat times because just trying to beat times in the long term will not get you any results apart from that number. If you'd like any more videos I hope you're enjoying these any questions you want to ask please feel free to email me jeremy at crossfitchilton.com add some comments like share subscribe whatever you have to do with videos and I shall speak to you all very soon. Thanks for watching.